What's going on everybody? I am still on the road, gonna be home soon, but we are also still bringing you the news with my good buddy Nico from afar. We're still making it happen, so uh, stick around to get tuned into all the latest goings on in Bitcoin. Uh, of course, I am Ben with the BTC Sessions, and this is your daily session. Bitcoin. Quick shout out to sponsors of the show, HODL, HODL.com. If you're buying Bitcoin and you want to focus on peer-to-peer -peer trading, no rehypothecation, instant self-custody, and no KYC, this is the place to go, HODLHODL.com. Just scroll down once you sign in with nothing more than an email address, choose your currency, your payment method, and your amount, and you're off to the races stacking non-KYC sats. Of course, when you get those non-KYC sats, you're going to want to secure them in the best hardware on the market, CoinKite cannot be beat they've got all the best stuff the cold card mark IV is my go-to but they've got plenty of other awesome stuff like the tap signer the sats card the block clock the open dime and coming really soon very excited for this one the cold card q1 near the end of this year if you want to reserve that or grab anything else i've mentioned head to coinkite.com use code btc sessions for five percent off everything in the store if you're looking to go beyond single sig uh, in your security setup, I encourage you to check out nunchuck.io. They have an assisted multi-sig setup called Honey Badger, and this is where you can set up your multi-sig very simply on your mobile device. It works with things like the tap side and the cold card and tons of other hardware options. Uh, and it's super easy to use. It has baked in inheritance planning so your sats get to your next of kin, no issues. And also non-KYC. You don't have to provide any personal information for this. So check them out, nunchuck.io. And finally, shout out to everybody at Start9. I love what these guys are building. And if you want to run your own personal server and your own Bitcoin stack, this is the place to do it. Uh, you can run things like Bitcoin Core, Lightning Node, Mempool.Space, Join Market. You can also host your own data, files, passwords, photos. And furthermore, you can do things like Nostra Relays and Nostra Clients. So check them out start9.com they've got a whole host of everything from entry level to something really serious really serious hardware if you're hosting your whole life there and with that let's dive into the news we're gonna be holding it down while ben is orange pilling the continent of europe we have a lot of news to cover and uh why don't we jump? Why don't we jump straight into it? So first, um, let's talk about censorship. The Swan Bitcoin channel was removed from YouTube. Uh, had fifty four thousand subscribers. It got banned. Now the good news, though, is that we all kind of rallied together. The tweet got a ton of traction. Got over a thousand likes, and the Swan Bitcoin channel was reinstated. Uh, but I'll, I'll 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 let you guys uh, you know. It, ask this question, right? Why is it that Bitcoin educational content is being targeted for censorship? Um, you know, we know that Bitcoin magazine has been the target in the past. They, 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 they pulled the channel in the middle of them live streaming. I think it was Bitcoin 2022. Well, a lot of these altcoin, uh, you know, channels that get, you know, millions of views, like millions of subscribers, uh, they're allowed to stay on the platform. Why is it that Bitcoin educational content that is not speculative is targeted? So that's the first thing that I want to cover. And in terms of more censorship, um, I want to talk about Apple. So Apple has a history of, of basically removing uh, Bitcoin applications uh, in the past. This was back in 2014. They removed a Bitcoin wallet from the app stores. Um, so you couldn't download a Bitcoin wallet uh, if you had an iPhone. And now the iPhone is really interesting because it's a closed garden, right? You have to get Apple's approval before you get your app listed on the app store. And I actually tweeted it out. I think it was like October of 2022. I said, hey, I, I think that this is this is a single point of, 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 of failure. I think this is a weak point that is going to be exploited in the future. And 
fast forward, um, Apple threatened to remove Damas, which is an application that connects with Noster, uh, from the App Store for letting users tip each other with Bitcoin. And the latest update with that is that you're not going to be able to receive uh, uh, receive zat, uh, zaps uh, or receive satoshis from other creators in your post if you have an iPhone. So, you know, but I mean, I, this doesn't come as a surprise just because there's that single point of failure uh, that you have to go through Apple. Anyways, in other news, um, we, we've we heard Elon basically talking about, uh, you know, how his vision of how he wants to uh, roll out Twitter, but it is kind of sinister in a way. And actually, I didn't believe it at first. Uh, it was actually Odell that pointed it out. But in this uh, specific tweet, I think Elon says the quiet part out loud. He says, hopefully we're re releasing the update this week. I've said it many times. It is increasingly difficult to distinguish between AI bots. Soon it will be impossible. The only social networks that survive will be those that require verification. The payment system is a mean of means of verification that increases bot costs by 10,000 X. Now, the thing is, if it was a Bitcoin payment system that didn't require the payment system to be tied to your identity, then I guess it wouldn't be so troubling. Um, but the fact that, you know, we he, he's using the legacy uh, payment system that does require it to be tied to an identity, that means that if you're an Anon and you want to message your favorite Bitcoiner, uh, you won't be able to do that. Now, Odell wrote a great piece. Uh, he goes on to say the blue check is the first step in Elon's plan to bring the Chinese social credit score system to the West. If you cannot resist the temptation of the blue check in its current form, you have already lost. What comes next will be much darker. And it goes on to say, here's a screenshot of Elon. It says, if our Twitter bid succeeds, we will defeat the spam bots or die trying and authenticate all real humans. Now, you would say, OK, you know, that's not a bad thing. The problem is that, you know, if if history has shown governments tend to abuse that power for, you know, for for their own political moat. I mean, this is the type of situation that Bitcoin fixes. And I think here's beauty on uh, he is the founder of Azteco. And he says lost on Elon is the fact that the Dama scandal is over Bitcoin. When the whole world settles on Bitcoin, both Apple and Elon will be forced to concede total defeat. Bitcoin is not a game and supporting Doge is not funny at all. Is Elon beginning to see this now? Who knows? And uh, Beauty on has retweeted a tweet from from Elon saying if Apple competes against the whole world, Apple will have the whole world against it. This is not a winning scenario. And Elon was actually referring to, uh, you know, the the Apple uh, mandate on Dama. So very interesting stuff there. In other news, uh, the U.S. dollar continues to lose ground. Uh, here is the president of Kenya, and he's calling for African nations to ditch U.S. dollar trade settlements. But it's not only Kenya, uh, it looks like the Treasury Secretary uh, Janet Yellen is noticing this herself. Uh, Treasury Secretary says to expect a so slow decline in U.S. dollar as a reserve currency. Now, why is this happening? Well, it's for two reasons, right? The U.S. is taking advantage of being world reserve currency to basically have this very unique ability of creating this tremendous amount of money, printing it out of thin air. Um, and because everyone else holds dollar dollars uh, dollars on reserves and they use dollars to trade, the U.S. is able to do that. It kind of out it it, it outsources its debt. It like it 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 exports it to the rest of the world, right? Um, and that was that's reason number one. And, and reason number two is the U.S. government has had a policy of weaponizing the dollar against its political opponents. Of course, its political opponents are going to seek an alternative. Now, this trend, um, you know, has been has been picked up in, in other forms. Uh, Ray Dalio wrote this uh, very popular book that was made into an extremely popular YouTube video. And he, you know, in this specific graphic, he's taught he, in, in the name of the book is called Changing World Order. He's making the case that, you know, there was the Dutch, it was the British. While while these people were while these empires were in power, it was their uh, currency that was the global reserve currency. And now he's making the case that the U.S. had its time to shine and now it's on the decline and China is on the world up uh, on the way up. And China will now be the world power. And with it being the world power, will be the world reserve currency, which is an absolutely terrifying dystopia because we know that China is a big fan of central bank digital currencies, right? 
Um, so instead of this being uh, the Chinese flag and a red line, I would love for it to be the Bitcoin flag and an orange line instead. How about we just don't have a state, uh, not don't have a state. How about we just don't have a state currency as a reserve, uh, as a world reserve currency? Because even in the U.S., with all its constitutional protections, the U.S. government still use that uh, for their own political means. Um, and again, this is just not me speculating. This is a Reuters article it says Pakistan paid Chinese uh, paid and Chinese currency for discounted Russian oil. So there's already major nations that are using alternative uh, alternative currencies to the U.S. dollar to transact. And again, that's for two reasons. People are tired of the U.S. just being able to print money and the people are tired of the U.S. weaponizing the dollar for uh, for their own political means. I would I'd make the case as a Bitcoiner that money should be neutral. No one should have the ability to uh, create money for free that another man has to work for. And no one should have the ability to censor another human being. Right. It's just period. Just, you know, let things go, but maybe I'm a little bit biased there. Anyways, in big news, uh, we said back in 2017, this was a big narrative, that institutions are coming. Institutions are coming. Well, institutions are here. BlackRock close to filing for a Bitcoin ETF. Um, and this came after the news that we, it was about like six months ago, maybe a year ago, that BlackRock went on to say, hey, uh, we're going to start offering Bitcoin as, uh, we're going to start offering Bitcoin to our institutional clients. BlackRock, is a massive, uh, a massive, um, massive company. It has ten trillion dollars under assets, and it it basically, uh, you know, it, it basically owns a percentage of every single major Fortune 500 company. So it has a tremendous amount of lobbying power. Anyways, that's the news. I know it went a little bit long today, Ben. I hope you're having a great time. Hope to see you guys next week. I'll catch all y'all later. Peace out. All right, a few more things before we wrap up. Uh, Nostra Protocol surpasses 1 million zaps. The network stats, ever-expanding features, and vibrant developer ecosystem are indicating that it is starting to gain traction. Uh, the decentralized social media protocol surpassed a significant milestone of facilitating over 1 million zaps between its users. And we can see here, nice chart of zaps. Um, that's pretty pretty interesting. Um, we have Derek Ross here saying, I still can't believe we hit 1 million zaps today. Zaps have only been around for four months. Clients didn't implement them right away either. Clients slowly adding this feature. It's an incredible milestone. Hashtag 1 million zaps. Uh, pretty cool. And I mean, this paired with Domus and Apple trying to clamp down on them at the same time. Uh, again, we got we to gotta look to alternatives to our app stores out there and normalize progressive web apps and other ways of getting apps on your phone because if it, we have to rely on Apple and Google, then uh, I think we're in a bad place. So learn how to uh, sideload apps onto your phone if you're on iOS. Super easy to do on Android. Uh, lots of different options for that. But nonetheless, let's keep going here. Uh, I wanted to pull this one up. Binance Pool launch it, launches BTC Transaction Accelerator. Uh, quote from them, a transaction accelerator is a service that helps speed up the confirmation process of cryptocurrency transactions, especially during network congestion or when a user has set low transaction fees. By using this service, transactions will be prioritized by the miners so they can be confirmed quicker than they otherwise would be. Um, the Binance Transaction Accelerator is exclusive to Binance VIP users. Yeah, okay. My comment on this is... Uh, again, number one, it seems like they're using this to get some sort of whatever the, the, what's the, what's the term for it? The, uh, VIP users. Yeah. They're, they're basically trying to sell whatever the subscription service is. I have no idea even. Um, and then furthermore, in terms of like their actual customers, like why not just add lightning withdrawals? I mean, I, I understand that at times people need to be able to bump transaction fees. Um, if the user themselves sent them to Binance, then if you're using any sort of a good wallet, it should have RBF and the ability to bump transactions yourself. Uh, nonetheless, I feel like this service and only having it for whatever the VIP user experience is, is just kind of, I don't know, shitcoin casinos being shitcoin casinos and only offering the bare minimum. Um, do better. Let's keep going.
Uh, Block has opened its public beta of BitKey and partners with Cash App and Coinbase. Uh, so the quote here, we're excited to announce we've opened our external beta program uh, to the first customers outside of our parent company, Block Inc. BitKey is a multi-signature self-custody Bitcoin wallet that comes with a mobile app, hardware device, and a set of recovery tools. Um, users will be able to uh, buy... Bitcoin, <laughs> says crypto, but Bitcoin from the two platforms when the Bitcoin only wallet is formally launched outside of beta. Lindsey Grossman, the business lead for BitKey, told Fortune on a video call with Fortune, Grossman believed uh, briefly flashed the wallet, its hexagonal device with a fingerprint scanner, and it fits into one's palm. BitKey's hardware component is one third of the multi sig or multi signature setup. It has three keys. One is on the user's cell phone, another is stored in the actual device, and Block holds the final key. So it's basically a two of three, an assisted two of three multi-sig setup. Anyways, should be interesting. Once it does drop and, and come out officially, then uh, uh, I plan on covering it, doing a video on it, tutorial. Um, yeah, should be interesting. I'm, I'm curious to see what it's like. I, I think they've definitely gone for like the simplified, uh, secure setup. But um, I'm also wondering if they'll have advanced features for those that want them. I guess time will tell. Uh, Zeus Wallet. All right. So Zeus 0 0.7.6. Uh, effectively, they have uh, adds the ability to leave notes on transactions, fiat exchange rates, um, point of sale, associate existing payments with open orders and hide open orders. Uh, they have a couple bug fixes here. Now, the, the notable thing here is not the specific updates, but the fact that Zeus had not been approved by the Apple App Store. It seems Apple is just kind of fucking with everything right now. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it has now been approved. They, they got through the approval process. I don't even know what the issue was there, but um, in, in light of uh, Domus being effectively removed for the app, from the App Store for Zaps and then another Lightning Wallet having problems. Um, yeah, again, the whole App Store thing, we need to normalize getting op uh, other options. And actually, look if you look here at the visual, you can see on the Zeus website, they sure, they have the App Store, Google Play Store, but they also have a downloadable APK file so that you can install directly to your Android phone without having to use the Google Play App Store. Uh, let's move on. Blockstream, ASIC miner to launch in Q3 of 2024. Uh, the quote here, Bitcoin infrastructure from Blockstream expects to unveil its long-awaited application-specific or ASIC miner. Uh, a culmination of years of engineering work around the third quarter of 2024, according to Blockstream CEO and co-founder Adam Back during the company's first ever media briefing on Tuesday. Quote, in January 2023, Blockstream raised $125 million to expand mining operations and says it plans to raise even more capital to fund its mining business. The new ASIC was originally slated for 2022, uh, but now anticipates having the miner available in the latter half of 2024. And the company acquired Israeli mining hardware manufacturer Spondulis, I think is how you say it, in 2021 and brought the manufacturer's core team into Blockstream's mining division. I mean, more choice is better for the consumers. Hopefully it's a good product. I guess we'll see. Maybe I'll get my hands on one. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, and then I wanted to touch on this. I've been, I'm currently in Oslo. I actually fly out tomorrow to the next thing, which I'll talk about. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, Alex Gladstein uh, is involved with the Human Rights Foundation, which puts on the Oslo Freedom Forum. And uh, yeah, it's been great. It's really cool kind of seeing these human stories, but then also seeing Bitcoin not as a, a focal point, but kind of in the background as a, a tool that's applicable uh, to a lot of these things in helping some of these human rights movements get funding into various countries where their banking infrastructure is cut off. Uh, so yeah, it, it's been running the past few days. It finished up yesterday. Uh, we had the financial freedom track, which was actually at, <laughs> it was at a floating um, sauna 
over on the fjord and yeah it was it was crazy it was awesome it was done in a sauna uh we had lots of different talks from lots of different awesome guests i'm not going to get super deep into it uh but there was a live stream and it was actually live streamed to the bitcoin magazine uh youtube channel so you can go check it out there the full day is there um and and it was awesome and as a nice little surprise uh i didn't i didn't know that this was gonna happen it was kind of last minute but hey I got to interview Adam back on stage with uh, a friend of mine, Ilan, and it was awesome. Just an impromptu uh, ask me anything. And uh, yeah, what a good time. It was it was really awesome. I do want to bring up in terms of like the human stories. By the way, this is uh, uh, Jack Mallers and Abubakar uh, talking about financial inclusion. And th- this was the inside of the sauna. It was actually quite hot in there. They didn't have the sauna on. They did have AC units running, but like it was hot outside and there's a big glass window behind and it was just, yeah, it was something else. But that's a sauna. It's huge. Um, I wanted to just read you guys something that I I posted while I was there. Um, And this was the one story that really, really got to me. Um, Some of the talks on the main stage the first couple of days horrific stories but also glimmers of hope in there um and so there's a man from from nicaragua and i was at the freedom forum last year uh and his wife was speaking and the reason uh his wife was speaking was because he was currently in prison he stood up to the government in nicaragua and went to run against them uh, as president and they didn't very much like that. So this is what I post on Twitter. Last year at the Oslo Freedom Forum, I listened to a talk from a woman whose husband stood up to the Nicaraguan president and tried to run against him in the election. He was kidnapped away from his family, interrogated, beaten, and imprisoned. As she spoke, he was sitting behind bars in solitary confinement. This is a photo of the same man speaking on stage this year, free and reunited with his young daughter after three years apart. There was not a dry eye in the room, especially my own. Um, his his wife was actually in my Bitcoin workshop last year, learning how to get a Bitcoin wallet to be able to send money to and from. Uh, so to see him free a year later, reunited with his daughter, uh, was was pretty intense, I've got to say. And they they started before he came out on stage they started with a video if of his daughter like the moment that they actually reunited uh and obviously you know she's in tears and everything but um what a great moment to kind of witness uh so nonetheless it was a pretty powerful few days it took a lot out of me but uh with that i'm not done uh, I'm getting on a plane in a couple hours here. Well, a few hours here. Flying to Toronto. So I'm going to see uh, a lot of awesome people at the Canadian Bitcoin conference. Uh, and they they have this thing stacked. Tons of awesome speakers coming up here. Um, a few to shout out. David St. Ange. Uh, can't wait to see Jesse Berger. Eric Yakes. Greg Foss. Uh, Brad Mills. Troy Cross. Tomer Strolite, uh, Ali from uh, Tahini's, Lawrence Lepard is going to be there, Francis Pouliot is going to be there, Derek Ross uh, from Noster Plebs, uh, Carlo from ShakePay, Dave Bradley, uh, Aaron Foster, Ben Harper, Julian Figuera, uh, again, Stefan Lavera, Adam O'Brien, uh, Mags. There's just so many people that are going to be there, so I can't I can't wait to see all of them. Um, if you're in town, if you haven't got a ticket yet and you want to come, uh, go to CanadianBitcoinConf.com and check them out. Uh, and furthermore, uh, I would say uh, check out the Bitcoin Rodeo. That's coming up really quick here uh, at the beginning of July, 4th and 5th. It's in my hometown in Calgary. I can't wait. Uh, it's going to be a nice kind of like intimate uh, group of speakers. Um, and it's at a place called uh, the Grand Theater. And uh, yeah, it should be a good time. So check it out. BitcoinRodeo.com should be a lot of fun. Nonetheless, I'm going to wrap up here, guys. Uh, of course, you can hit up the previously mentioned sponsors down below. Hoddle, hoddle, coin kite, nunchuck, and start nine. Head over to my website, btcsessions.ca, if you need some hand holding, some extra help uh, if the free tutorials are not enough. And if you really liked what you saw, you can always drop me a tip. Uh, just scroll down a little bit on my website. There's a lightning QR code, or you can click on it and it will take you to my Guys Are Fun page. Huge shout out to everybody that's been uh, dropping sats there. Much appreciated. You guys are awesome. And with that, I'm out. This has been 
your Simply Session. Hold all the Bitcoin.